I'm Pascal Tetro from Ecole Nationale de Cirque in Montreal, Canada. Hi, my name is Thibaut Claire. I come from Exact Toledo, Toulouse, France. For our Fed talk, we have um, chosen the subject transmission to students. For our video, we have chosen to do a basic inspection of a rigging system. During our years of rigging, Thibault and I have noticed that most of the incidents would happen from a lack of basic verification of your rigging system before putting someone's life onto it. So, in order to do my inspection, I will start from bottom to top. You might as well start from top to bottom, but make sure you do it in an order so you don't forget any elements. So at the bottom here, I'm very conscious that you probably will encounter a different kind of uh, anchor point. But here I've got mechanical anchors tied up to a plate. Some plates will have a uh, thermal paint that will shift colors if abused. But in any cases, you want to make sure that the matter in which it's embedded is a good quality. So I will look for cracks. I will also look for corrosion. And I will also look for a good quality uh, concrete. Now there's no way you can tell if your uh, concrete's a good quality or not. But you can take a piece of metal and scratch it. And of course, if your um, concrete starts crumbling, it's a good indi indication that it ain't of good quality. Then I will start looking at um, um, my plate, but of course, finishing with the um, anchor point, these mechanical anchors need to be torqued. So there is no way that my washer under here could be loose. So of course, if it's all tied up, it's a good indication it's been installed properly. Um, then start looking at my plate. I have my anchor point here is um, my pulley system, but also the anchor point of my blocker. So I'll start inspecting my anchor points, meaning in between my shackle and my anchor plate, I look for the wear in between them to see if it's reasonable or not. Then I look if my shackle is tied up real good, it's screwed in real good, and if it's moused or needs to be moused, I will make sure that I have my zip tie present here. Then I move up and look up my, uh, the wear in between my shackle and my timbal, and then the general condition of my cable, see if I don't have any wires standing out here. And I come up to um, a timbal again and look for the wear in between the timbal and the quick link here, making sure my quick link screws downwards um, and also that it is screwed. Then I will look for the wear in between my uh, quick link and my blocker. And if in good condition, I will go on and on and on, of course. Then looking at my blocker, I'll look at my rivet. I'll make sure that the blocking mechanism still works good. And I look at the general condition of my handle. But don't skip the handle. By, you have to look if it's straight, if it's still straight or if it's not warping or anything, okay? Also look for... Um, little dents or uh, marks that would indicate that it's been banged onto something. This one looks in good condition and then I will keep going on. So I'm not going to go up right away. I'm going, still going to go back to the bottom. Make sure I'm not forgetting this part. Of course, I still have a shackle. Look for the wear between the shackle and the plate. Make sure the shackle is very well screwed in. If it's mouse, if it needs to be moused. Now here, I got sailing type of pulley. On these sailing type of pulleys, you still have small shackles at the top. Note here at the school, we glued them with tread locker. We used a blue tread locker that we put here in the shackle pin. And then if it's mouse needs to be mouse, make sure it's mouse and make sure with your finger that it still screws in. My pulley swivel head still swivels good. My rivets here are in good condition. Um, the sheave seems to be in good condition. I'm making sure it turns and I'm also looking at it to see if it's been banged around or anything. And then um, 
I will skip this part because nothing's tied up to it. We'll look at it later. Then I'm still accompanying my rope while touching it. What I'm doing is I'm looking for a difference in diameter, as you will see my friend Thibault do later on, on the whole length of the, uh, the rope. Um, it comes up to here. I have a figure eight knot. I'm looking at to see if my figure eight knot is crushing my ends here and the exit of my figure eight. It looks also well done. Um, then I will look inside here between my swivel and my rope. Make sure that my rope isn't crushed or isn't cut in here. So I will look for a difference of diameter. If you have a flat part, naturally by milking it, it should take back its original shape. If it doesn't, you may have a problem in here. Now I will look at my swivel then. Of course, I looked at the wearer, but I'm not super wary here because it's rope inside metal. Then I look if my swivel swivels pretty good. This has to do the movement very fluidly without any like grainy feelings or sandy, weird, fe scratchy feelings in here. I don't want to have that. Then I look at the distance here, right here, the, the little gap that's in between my two swivel pieces, make sure that it looks reasonable and it's not present there. If I'm worried, I will um, compare with a brand new one. Um, then I'll look here, the wear in between my swivel and the becket, making sure that the becket is screwed in and also having a Teflon, uh, a nylon lock here is, is pretty good. And I'm making sure the bolt comes out of the knot. Um, then look at the general condition of my pulley, of course, looking if there are like uh, dent marks or uh, paint that's gone that would indicate that my pulley's bang, been banged on pretty badly. Make sure, sure it rolls again. And of course, swivel head and rivets here. Uh, making sure this little shackle still is tied up. And I'm also um, looking at the wear. Oh, I got a pretty good wear here. So um, here in school, we will tolerate 10% of wear on a steel uh, piece. If there is more than 10%, of course we will replace. But be aware that Pedzol only wants to tolerate one millimeter. So one mil on a two centimeter piece would be only still one mil although 10 percent will make two mil but yeah we tolerate 10 percent mostly except if it's swivel we like to follow uh, um, uh suppliers uh <laughs> indication of course so same thing here uh swivel swivel good no space um the wear up here also and my um, quick link still screws downwards and is still well screwed. Then of course I will look up the wear in between my thimble and um, my quick link. If you wanna know if your thimble's been deformed or abused, thimbles will have a tendency to elongate well when they are deformed. So you can look right under here at the bottom part in the middle of the thimble and if the thimble has widened in a, into a weird shape it is signed that it has deformed you can't see it here because this one's in good condition but it would be uh, widening right here in the middle if it be damaged then i'm going to look at the general condition of my cable and of course i will then lower my point and make sure that i will inspect the other end While I'm lowering my system, I'm feeling the system to see if I feel any jaggedy movement. I'm also looking at my rope and touching my rope, making sure that I don't have any of those difference in diameters while touching it. And last, I'm listening to the pulleys in the ceiling because if you're on the ground, you don't have access to those pulleys in the ceiling. The only thing you can do is feel them and listen. Of course, if it's screaming like a banshee, you have a problem. You got a lubricating problem up there, which the riggers will have to go up and check for.
Now, of course, you want to inspect the other end of your system. So, sorry. I will start by looking at my, the general condition of my cable. Then, of course, the wearing point in between my swivel and my timbal here. And make sure that my swivel swivels very good. Now, note that some of the swivel may swivel very good without a weight. And once you start putting weight on them, it, they will start showing signs of gr grindy, whatever. They won't be as fluid as they was when you went through it for the first time without the weight. So um, that being done, still look at the space in between the two parts of my swivel, then look at the lower part for wear and I will then make sure that my carabiner f functions properly of course I'm looking at the general state of the beaner including the rivet in here and I will do the open and let go test make sure that my gate here that the spring into my gate still functions very good and that my beaner is in good condition hasn't been deformed so I'll then proceed then remove my sandbag. Oh, and then hook my apparatus to it so my system doesn't fly away. I will then inspect my apparatus. If you want to leave the sandbag on and inspect your apparatus on the floor, you can also do. Um, looking at my timbal here, looking at the general state of my rope, if I don't see any cable popping up, any weird coloration on my rope, um, here, I do have a rope that has a steel cable into it, so it ain't just cotton rope, but you do have a steel cable, which seems to be in good condition. I don't see any rust in there. And then I looked at, for example, here, your apparatus is not going to be the same thing, but if you use your logic in your inspection, for example, a lira is supposed to be round and not oval. I'm looking at my lira, and it's a, la a round lira. And a lira is supposed to be straight, not warped and wavy. And looking at my lira leaning on the floor, I can see it's straight. I will then look at the state of my um, padding here. If I don't see any rips in the padding, it indicates that it probably hasn't been bent too much from side to side. What we want to be careful of here is the cable being cut in here for, from folding all the time okay so you probably won't be able to tell with your eyes but um, your padding being uh, cut or open up opening up would be a sign so I will then proceed to put my apparatus up in the air at the height needed and at the other end because I have a blocker I insist that you will do a knot depending on your installation but it's a very good idea to have this part here which is your quick link so you can go through the quick link so I will put it in my blocker and then go through the quick link keeping my rope straight in parallel with my blocking handle go through my quick click this is how we do it here you can also not to the ground if you want to a ground anchor point but just going through the blocker and locking it with a key once and then i'll do it a second time just to prevent if the blocker starts chewing the rope the knot will give you a backup here, okay? Now, there are big chances that you will not encounter the same system or the same installations in your spaces, but, and, just doing the basic verification can save a lot. You may also skip 
some of the parts and I may have skipped some parts too, maybe. But at least I did my basic verification. I know my anchor point are still able to hold my life and I can trust it. So I thank you for watching this video. I'm saying please be careful, do your basic inspections. Bye bye. Bye.